So let's take a look at those two extreme cases, that is when the population correlation rho is equal to positive 1 or negative 1. Here's a theorem. Let x and y be random variables with population correlation rho. The population correlation rho is equal to negative 1 if and only if the support of x and y lies on a line with negative slope. Down at the bottom here, draw a quick picture of that particular situation. Here is x, here is y. In the discrete case, if we happen to have points such as these, and we can draw a line through them, and if that line has negative slope, then the correlation will be negative 1. The population correlation rho equals positive 1 if and only if the support of x and y lies on a line with positive slope. So for that particular situation, here is x, here is y. If you have some points, and maybe it's these three points right here, and all of the support lies on a line with positive slope, then rho is equal to 1. The proof of this is given in the textbook. The interpretation here is the population correlation rho is a measure of the intensity of the concentration of the probability about a line with positive or negative slope. So that is a nice interpretation of the correlation. This is maybe not a bad time to get into the notion of something known as causality because even though it might be concentrated about a line that does not mean that the random variable x necessarily causes the random variable y to be higher or lower or such. Here are two quick examples. One is if you let the random variable x be chewing gum sales for a country. And you let y be the number of crimes committed annually in that country. Well, if you look at small countries like the Vatican City or Liechtenstein, you're going to have very low chewing gum sales and you also won't have many crimes in small countries. And the reason for that is these two variables are linked to population because for every mouth that is connected to chewing gum, there are two hands out there to commit the crimes. So these two um, don't cause one another because if they did cause one another, then to eliminate crimes, you could simply ban chewing gum and we know that that won't work. Here's another one. An example two here, you can let X be shoe size and let Y be the number of spelling words that someone can spell correctly. And in that particular case, what you have going on, and let's just say these are elementary school children, um, shoe size is very much um, uh, correlated with age and the number of spelling words that somebody can spell is also correlated with age and so because of that um, you have no causality between X and Y. The fact of the matter is these two variables are tied to the age of the child and uh, you don't have causality. Now sometimes you do and sometimes you don't and that causality means you have to know the process very well to determine whether or not causality is present.